It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. Hello and welcome. He is Gary McNamara. I'm Eric Harley. As we begin a blame game Tuesday. <laughs> I like that. Listen, I got all this cash and all my clothes and whatnot and these gold bars from saving. You know, I'm just, because this is what I'm used to. This is how I safely save money. Oh, by the way, Menendez is running again. Yes. That was a whole talk about a cluster. Now, he says... No, I'm going to fight this. I'm going to be fully exonerated. That's confidence, man. I don't think the uh, DA of the Southern District of New York, I don't think that prosecutor believes the same. It's pretty, from what I can see, and again, we're always very careful Mm -hmm. with any type of litigation, especially early on. Mm Mm-hmm. When you don't have everything, but initially what I see, <laughs> they'll get them. Well, it's, if, if you were to ask me, if you say, what, you know, what are the, what are the odds? If I was a betting man, I, I would say they're going to get them. That's why they went after yeah. him because it was yeah. so blunt and obvious. Was it, uh, was it Turley? It was Jonathan Turley who wrote the other day. He goes, look, <laughs> every politician benefits he said, he goes, the ones they catch for bribery yeah. are the ones that are so absolutely outrageously crystal clear right. that if they come after you as a member of Congress, the vast majority of times, it's an easy case. Well, that's it. And it, because my first thought is, all right, you know, step back as Menendez did his press conference and the whole thing. And after that, I thought, all right. Then looking at it from the prosecution standpoint or just just observer, what does the prosecution have? You know, the money in envelopes, you have gold, his uh, wife has money in a safe, uh, cash in a safe deposit box. And I thought, you know, with that, I thought, well, why would you put it in a safe deposit box and not the bank? I mean, I understand you. I don't I don't understand. That's why I'm asking the question. And those are the things that I looked at and I thought, all right, so the money was in envelopes. We saw the pictures. I think the New York Post had a number of them. And and how the money was being kept. And I wonder what they have in evidence, prosecution, uh, in terms of uh, those envelopes and, and, and basically the proof that he took a bribe, that he took money. Uh, to help and protect individuals and businesses. And and uh, it's going to be interesting to watch that thing play out. Because what do you do? I mean, rule number one, especially if you're on the left, is deny, deny, deny. And they don't change that rule until they, you know, uh, essentially all the proof is out there. And then sometimes they'll say, well, that, you know, Sorry, officer, that wasn't mine. That weed belonged to a friend. I mean, they just come up with any and every excuse. Mm-hmm. That it, well, let, let's put it this way: that, they, that when when it comes to bribery, you know, you have the Democrats, you know, screaming that. Well, wait a minute. There's no evidence that that uh, Joe Biden was actually rewarded. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so that means that the you know, and then you get to the point of it was the uh, the illusion of access the illusion but it wasn't the illusion of access because they got access they got access they got access you know and so everyone knows that if there's a direct payment or the direct cash for example was it eighty thousand dollars in your freezer yeah right exactly (laughs) that's still the was that the congressman was that from louisiana louisiana yeah Yeah, and and eighty thousand in in your freezer 
or gold bars or gold bars. You know that. I mean, that's that's right. the one where I I I'm sorry, but I burst out laughing. I went gold bars. Well, wow. Uh, <laughs> you don't keep the evidence around, and you know when you when they talk about the 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 fact that uh, Biden and a was, car apparently that's yes part of the allegations well, when, when they when they talk about the fact that with uh, with uh, Biden. By the way, there was a car in there for Hunter. Uh, but when they when they talk uh, about it, that's one of the things. Well, you, you don't have evidence of the direct payments. No, you don't have evidence of the direct payments yet, but you do have evidence to, for direct payments to nine different members of the Biden family, yeah. you know, through bank accounts, through LLCs. And that's why the American public isn't stupid. Either you, either you have that the evidence, which is, the uh, the treasures you have gotten yeah. that are tangible money, gold bars, uh, well, you know, whatever. And it's like, okay, because you have that, then the question is, you know, or from prosecutors, you know, what did you do? You know, mm-hmm. what did you actually do? We actually know in one of the cases what Biden did. Mm-hmm. And you don't hear the defense anymore, even from Democrats, that the prosecutor was crooked in in Ukraine. Yeah, right. And so you have, you know, you have that, and then you have the rewards that Hunter got and everything else, and that's why the bank accounts and getting, you know, the the subpoenas for the bank accounts so you can figure all of that out is so important. But there are certain clues that the American public understands that says, okay, these are highly suspicious highly suspicious things of influence peddling and or bribery. Hmm. One would be the actual tangible reward for that bribe mm-hmm. or the the infrastructure of bank accounts and fake corporations to launder that money to other family members. Yeah. That's right. why they can't right. that's why the Democrats can't win it and you know the democrat it's all about politics it's all about politics it's not all about politics that's why the democrats are scared to death on all of this because it's been so clear that all this is just hanging out there they can't convince the american public otherwise well no the the whole show when you talk about money for influence uh especially coming from foreign entities that's not a sophisticated or complex scenario and biden and Historically, you can see it, and certainly not Hunter. Neither one of them are sophisticated individuals. This is why we, you know, I've been saying this is not a Clinton-esque type plan. This isn't the the tangled web that Hillary weaved for the Russian hoax. This is something very simple. And they thought, I mean, because your arrogance... You know, if we find out that this is the case, we know we know certain things right now are fact, but the arrogance carries you to believe that you're not going to get caught or it's there's nothing wrong with what you did. It's one of the two. And it you ask yourself, well, who would be that arrogant? Hmm? These well, people. Right. And 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 the other thing, you know, if if you look at, you know, just compare the two if you look at the, the the biden situation the defense that it was an illusion of access that all mm-hmm. these all these corrupt individuals in different countries would continually over a period of years continue to send you know money to the bidens but nobody got anything in return from joe biden right Yet it continued to the point of setting up this incredible infrastructure. That's a very, very weak defense to yeah. hold on to. No, it is. That's and it that's is. the problem because it's not just in the case of a politician. It's not just whether they are criminally charged mm-hmm. with it. Right. You know, uh, it, it is. For example, if it's a member of Congress, mm-hmm. but when it's a when it's a vice president at the highest level, you yeah. know that is yeah. to most people. They look at that as the same as treason. You're selling out the country for cash. Well, and I think, too, I mean, look, I don't know how many people have uh, done wrong things and at that level and gotten away with it. But I'll say this, that you're more likely you would be more inclined to do the work, do the work, honestly, even if you're not, you know, I mean, honestly, it's relative here. They are politicians, but uh, 
you, you do the work, you do the job, and then you go on your speaking engagements and make gazillions of dollars. There's where your money comes in. There are people that have a problem with that. You know, that after they leave office, they go out and they sit on the board. Uh, you know, they, uh, they they become lobbyists. They become lobbyists. They work right. for a university and never teach a class. And they do things that <laughs> they get paid for, you know, doing whatever. And and it's a lot of money, but right. that's but, but, but that's legal. But re, but remember the 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 whole thing of the class for Penn mm. uh, for the uni, for the university mm. is the fact that those speeches were done to get a tremendous amount of money from the Chinese to help set to, that to, all to, to help to, set that all up. So it's yeah, not just exactly. it's it's not just that right. you're sitting you know uh, you, that well no you, that's a great that, point. That you he melded the two. You, yeah, he he melded the two. Right. He could have done. The, the the university thing and said you know you pay you I'm this is my time to build some cash whatever, but he took it further right because I don't think there's nothing wrong that after you're a vice president or uh, a, a president if you decide I'm going on a speaking tour I don't you're have, simply, I don't have a problem right, with that you know you're you're simply speaking you're not in office anymore right. the you know the and, and most I will say this the majority of speeches are useless. Yeah, you right. know, it's your, but people right. people pay and wish to be BS'd even after the fact of a presidential election, and there's some kind of status in getting an ex president or even an ex vice president. Because Joe Biden, even if he was never president, yeah. if he was vice president, Joe Biden could still go out and think about this. I mean, it, it may not be uh, you know uh, serious cash to Elon Musk, right? But if you're on a senator's salary and you're finished being a senator and mm -hmm. you've been a senator for fifty years. Mm -hmm. You can still do a ton of fifty thousand, one hundred thousand dollar hits for a forty five minute speech, and you can sit on and, the board of directors for a number of companies and get paid a lot right. of money for going. Yeah, I agree, or I don't well, agree, just, or whatever. Just, just because of the yeah. status, yep. you may be useless. Yeah, but <laughs> many politicians are to begin with. Exactly, and it's like, well, you know, I. <laughs> Well, no, it was. Uh, the, I, it, I like the fact that he never stood for anything. It was uh, the whole Elizabeth Holmes thing. You know, you get these high profile individuals to sit on your board of directors to make people believe you've got a legitimate company. I mean, that's how far she took it. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And those are the things that, you know, and that's what happens after your political career. And so there's nothing wrong with So you can still make a ton of cash. Mm -hmm. You right. know, and, and you, you know, you and I talked about it, but well, what a gravy train that is. Right. Well, you know, it's tough, you know, because you're only on a presidential salary, and where can you make money? A hundred thousand a hit for a speech? Are you kidding for forty five minutes? Right, man. If I was a president, yeah. I'd be like, no, nah, I'm not going to run for a second term. Why? <laughs> I'm going to cash out for the well, next. I want to. I want to be. You know, I'm. I'm going to get out. Why serve four more years? I'm going to get out and do for the next year. I'm going to go on tour. I'm going yeah. to be like the Stones. Yeah. Right. I'm going to do five speeches a week. Right. I'm going to go over all over the country. I'm going to make a half a million a week for the next year, and then I'm moving to Fiji. <laughs> During his time as host of The Tonight Show, Jay Leno lived off the money from corporate gigs alone. Yeah, he, he never right. cashed a check from NBC. All of that. He put aside and lived off, and he would get a hundred thousand dollars per. He, they would fly him Friday after Friday afternoon after Friday evening, after they taped the the Friday Tonight Show. They'd fly him to Vegas. He'd do his corporate gig, and then he would do another one. So there's it, they, he was paying reportedly a hundred k each. So that's two hundred thousand a week. That's what he lived on. I don't know how he made it, but he got by. <laughs> well, he, and and then yeah. he never and then he never took a vacation. Then Sunday night he was at the comedy store, uh, workshopping material to go back into the you know the 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 uh, was the it the Monday comedy store or was it the Magic Club? What's it the Magic Club? Yeah, it's the Magic that he still does today. Yeah. Okay. Free. By okay. the way, for free. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't no, charge. I think, I think you, yeah, I think you may be right. But no, yeah. he goes. He's he'll just show up and do a spot. Yeah. And you know those are the things. By but the way, he's done it. I this is as of about a year ago. Mm. He has never missed a Sunday night right. doing that. Right. Since he right. started doing it, we're talking decades. While he was on the Tonight Show, he never took a day off. Yeah, no. until he, he yeah. got sick one time, 
And he said, I had this fear of, you know, going somewhere, taking a vacation, sitting on a beach and then not wanting to go back to work. <laughs> and, you know, I, it, probably just a joke. Yeah. But I mean, he just he just loved what he did. But but the point is, is that these individuals, I mean, at that level, I don't know what Obama commands for, you know, a 45 minute speech. And Obama can just talk about whatever. It doesn't have to be anything at that level. A president or vice president, by the time they've hired you, it doesn't matter. You could do the um, Alex Lifeson acceptance speech <laughs> from the band Rush at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, blah, 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 and get paid handsomely. I well, mean, it's just that's just the name of the game. I I, I was, wow. Mm. This is from 2017. You know how much he was earning for speeches, Obama? Huh. huh. 400,000 for a speech. Yeah, there you go. And and the thing is, can, and hope and change and bringing this country to a great, you can do the most BS rhetoric, and these people will pay incredible amounts to be, the, actually, that's what it's about with, with this, because you're yeah. going to a friendly audience. It's like, right. we want to be bs and we will pay you incredible dollars just to throw the biggest line of crap bias. Yeah. And and, then, and so why do you have to be involved in why in, why would you do that? Any type you don't of have bribery to or do any, that. You don't. Well, it's because it's an arrogance. I'm going to show my power. Look what I can do, man. I got him fired. Yeah. I mean, that's this is who Joe Biden is. That's the kind of attitude that takes people to different levels, you know, and and, and that kind of behavior. You know? I mean, again, and people like Barack Obama. Also, the publishers are knocking on the door, and they send a ghostwriter to do most of the work. You know, so you're getting all these deals that just come your way. Uh, Netflix, Spotify, just paying you cash because of who you are. Why in the world would you need to do anything like this? Because you're arrogant and you want to flex your power. Biden earned up to two hundred thousand dollars per speech after he was vice president. Wow. Wow, that's that's you could and you know you could book one yeah yeah this is you know, you know the thing yes, come on no joke <laughs> take our no money joke. please here's two hundred thousand dollars could you mumble some this, more where's my tip come on man you know the thing eight six six ninety red eye did you know that up to half of all major engine failures are due to poor cooling system maintenance. That's a lot of downtime and can cost drivers big. You expect a lot from your engine, which is why the cooling system must be a part of your maintenance routine. Here's a tip to keep your cooling system in shape and your engine running smooth. Inspect your radiator, belts, and hoses for potential failures and deterioration, especially ahead of winter. Check the condition of your coolant to ensure it's at the optimum freeze point. Inadequate freeze protection levels can result in cracking of lines or passages. If you find insufficient freeze point levels or any wear and tear, have these issues repaired by technicians you can trust. This report is brought to you by Shell Rotella. Shell Rotella, with advanced synthetic technology, is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. We got so much to uh, talk about. The White House mm. uh, announced, uh, uh, well, they announced a couple of days ago, but uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre having troubles yesterday as the president is going to walk the picket line with UAW workers. He is fully supportive of the UAW, but cannot tell you what he's supportive of. Yeah, that's we don't. where we are. And, yeah. uh, and since uh, Taylor Swift is in the news, if you try to sell the tickets to a concert, the IRS will know. Mm-hmm. That coming up. All right. You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. Turn on radio. He's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Well, the uh, IRS and the Department of Justice, well, when it comes to Hunter Biden, uh, hey, 
no problem. We're going to let the statute of limitations on your felony evasion of taxes Mm -hmm. charges just disappear. Yeah. And in doing so, will not even go after you for the money that you owe. Right. That we know you owe. That you, we know you owe from the tens of millions of dollars that you and your family brought in. But here we go for you, Joe Citizen, Joe and Jane Sixpack Citizen, people who have made money from reselling tickets to concert sporting events this year will face new scrutiny from the IRS. Mm -hmm. A newly implemented law lowered the tax reporting thresholds for users using e-commerce platforms like Ticketmaster and StubHub by requiring those platforms to provide information on sellers' proceeds to the IRS if the ticket sales in 2023 were worth more than $600. That does not mean the profit that you made is $600. That means the cost of the tickets, the sales of the tickets. So if you had four tickets to something Mm -hmm. and you paid, and this is very commonplace, you paid $180 for the tickets and you sold them for $200 Mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 a piece, uh, when, and, you know, you did that in a particular transaction and somebody bought them. Uh, that would be $80 uh, of income that you would have to be taxed on. Boy, that's really going to make taxes simpler, isn't it? <laughs> Talking about the whole thing of we're yeah. going to make your taxes simpler. You're going to be able to do it on a yeah. postage stamp. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so tiny. Uh, and and so the, and so you'd have, you'd have to pay taxes on that 80 bu- a bucks. The previous reporting threshold applied to users with $20,000 in revenue and 200 uh, transactions. But the new threshold will be triggered with just one transaction if it tops $600. Right. Under the rule, ticketing platforms will be required to report sellers' proceeds of $600 or more over the course of a year and send them... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Does that mean one transaction, or does that mean over the course of the year? No, no, no. That's total. If, if that's you, if it's six hundred wow. or more for the year. Wow. Yeah, you get a ten ninety nine. Well, that well, good sports tickets. Everybody's going to be hit on that. Oh yeah. And so the company's going to be looking. So the, you're going to pay taxes on it. So the IRS is going to be looking as to you know, my you know, this is why I hate the income tax. By the way, because. Uh, you know, we always knew it was going to go to this particular point. We need to make more money. Oh, and by the way, the Biden administration says this is to go after the billionaires. Yeah. Remember, that's what they said about exactly. the previous thing about yeah. the $600 in transactions in a bank account that it was going after the billionaires. They were lying mm-hmm. uh, uh, about that. Uh, under the rule, uh, ticketing platforms would be required to report sellers proceeds of $600 or more. Now, again, that that's not profit. On it, the proceeds means you simply have sold the tickets, and then the IRS sends you sends you something. They're of knowledge of that you did it. Will, will they know how much in exact profit you made? What you paid for the ticket? You'll have to you sold? you'll have to prove it because and, a ten ninety nine right. will come to you, and you'll have to fill your taxes out accordingly. You'll have and, you'll you know, have to people prove can, it. Right? You could lie, and then if you get you know if you get uh, uh, a. Uh, an IRS agent at your door and wants to see everything, you're in trouble. I mean, you're going to, and if you claim, if you come back and say, well, I paid 800 for the tickets, but I sold them for 600, you're going to have to show that. You're going to have to demonstrate that. Now, the the thing is, if, could you imagine the politics of this? Because you know the politics of IRS. Okay, well, you sold Marin Morris tickets. Well, actually, you took a loss on those, but, <laughs> but you sold Marin Morris tickets. That's okay. We're not going to bother you. What? You saw Nugent? Yeah. You right. resold Nugent tickets? Yeah, exactly. We're, we're gonna... <laughs> um, so you get, a, you get a 1099 form. Jason where... Aldean? You... Jason Aldean, exactly. You sold Jason Aldean tickets. Uh, but you Now get... the Department of Justice is coming over. <laughs> you get a, a 1099 form regardless of whether you earned a profit. So the IRS is going to be able to monitor... It doesn't matter whether you made a profit. You, 
is if you do it over a period of a year, they're going to know every concert ticket you bought. From what I know, right? I mean, or uh, no, maybe they won't know that. They'll just well, know the, the platform amount. reports it the and then sends you the ten ninety. Right. Has to, they send right. a ten ninety nine to the IRS. They send you one as well if you're a seller and you and you sell over six hundred dollars worth. So you're gonna have to keep records of the tickets that you sold. Yeah. 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 Wow. This is why I hate the IRS because yeah. the, the 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 income tax, not not the IRS. Well, at times I could hate the IRS, but the income tax because it allows the government to get into every little stinking aspect of your life, and you're seeing it right here. That's why right. it's eventually has to go because as we as uh, we become as we have become uh, you know more highly. Uh, technical in in the ability of what we of, of what we can do and what we can monitor through electronics. This is the kind of thing that's going to happen. The government will be into every little stinking aspect of your life, and there they are, right there. Well, you got to prove what concert tickets you bought last year and what you sold. You got to prove to us what you know what you bought. You know what concert tickets because that's not going to be in the ten ninety nine k form. It'll just be the overall amount. So if they come to you. You're going to have to show them what? Receipts of the tickets? Yeah. No, you'll have to have proof. Of everything that you did. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And think about that. I mean, this will be much more involved even than the inheritance tax. Think about where the level of the inheritance tax is, right? Mm-hmm. versus someone who might turn around some tickets and make a $600 profit or make a or $600 sale. Yeah, $20, $20 profit, mm-hmm. $10 yeah. profit. Or no to... profit. Could be a loss. Oh, right, right. But, I mean, you're yeah. going to have to pay on that $10, $20. They're not going Anybody to. Anybody who has right. sales of 600 or more is going to receive a 1099 yeah. but this whole, from the platform. This whole bunch of BS that they were selling you. When they did this, you know, especially with the six hundred dollars in the bank accounts, where they said they're going after the billionaires, that was ridiculous because they knew it. That wasn't the case. But here, they're going after any type of amount of profit that you have made mm. off of a concert ticket. Yeah, right. And you know, this is the thing. Um, uh, one of our listeners, great listeners, pointed out. Well, you know, corporations already have to. If you're a non-employee. And you do something for them, and they pay you more than six hundred for the year. They have to send out a ten ninety nine, yeah, right? We know they that. send that. They report that. What's different here is that these platforms aren't just constituted by small contractors and businesses. There may be a, a number of individuals doing this for a living, and the threshold up till now was twenty thousand, and now it's down to six hundred. So if you made 20000 or more for the year, you had to report it because they they said, okay, that looks like a business. That looks like a, a side gig to the point of, you know, a regular income. But when somebody turns around, you know, uh, a couple of pair of tickets a year, and you can easily these days, uh, you can oh, easily yeah. sell tickets for, I mean, I don't I have I don't remember the last time I I checked on concert tickets. I think it was Nate Bargatze. And I didn't even remember the price cuz it was sh- it was a show I wanted to go to. I I didn't make it to that show, but you know, that's the last time I actually checked on concert tickets comedian Nate Bargatze and you know, it doesn't matter who they are. You know, Taylor Swift uh you know, if you if you look at the uh, all the companies that sell, aside from the main ticket companies, then and and third party, all the drive for those Taylor Swift tickets. I don't know what's. I I would love to know what's the record for a ticket price that someone actually paid, not not somebody listed it for, but someone actually paid. It's a lot of money, but an individual. At six hundred dollars, that could be four tickets. That could be four tickets that don't turn a profit. And you know that's the thing. If if the IRS, it, this is the opposite. 
remember the Herman Cain 999 plan? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was everything out of the box sounded great. And then it was like, okay, and then we'll fade out the income tax. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've got to end one to start the other. They can't overlap for any period of time. But the idea, and and we've talked about it for a number of years, getting away from the income tax. Uh, Conservatives have been talking about it. This is why you said it. Um, you've said it repeatedly over the years. Uh, many of us have. You just don't want the IRS all in your business. So I I decided to look at what is the hottest NFL game this week. Okay. Yeah. The hottest NFL game this week hmm. is Miami at Buffalo. Okay. All right. So this is, you know, this is Buffalo. And again, Buffalo is not a rich town. It's not like, it's not like, you know, Dallas when it comes to, you know, people buying season tickets and mortgaging their homes to do so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, tickets are are going up like they are in any, every NFL city. So I'm looking in the secondary market. All right, and I went just I just went to SeatGeek. Okay, okay. Here we go. Let's look at some of the tickets. What they're selling for? All right, eight hundred and seventeen dollars. That's one ticket. That's <laughs> one ticket. Now, the, now this is in the lower bowl, and and you're we're talking between the thirty and and you know between the thirty and thirty yard lines. Mm-hmm. But 813, 908, 611. That's each 479. And I'm doing this just so people understand how easily you get in, you know, into, you know, by just one ticket sale, you'll get hit. And even if you go into the, uh, the end zone, 262, 225, 297, uh, 268, uh, getting up into the, uh, you know, 330. Uh, 294 a piece, 335, 273, uh, 383, uh, 366. Uh, even in the even in the upper deck, where you know if you've ever been to the, the Bill Stadium, the upper deck is about oh about uh, you know three miles from the field. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take a flight. <laughs> uh, 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 236. 255, 255, 244, 275, 245. I mean, and so uh, 300. And that's in the upper level, way up there. So any good ticket, if you sell two of them, an IRS report, a 10, you know, a 1099, you're going to get 1099K, you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so think about some of the other, you know, game concerts out there, like a a Taylor Swift concert, you know, and, and, even though we're sick and tired of hearing about Taylor Swift. God. Well, she's crushing it. I mean, man, I, I went in the New York Post uh, today and I was just like, yeah, stop no, it. it. No, it was all over. Stop it. It was everywhere. <laughs> it's like, I don't And care. then she had a what an all girls party with someone, some other cele- female yeah. celebrity who was breaking up with. It was one of the Jonas Brothers. By the way, it's the first time I'd seen the words Jonas Brothers <laughs> in a long, long time. So. But yeah, um, it but I, was... I, I thought it'd be interesting just to look at it, you know, at at one particular game out there, and yeah. probably there are other NFL games. I mean, I I can't even imagine what a seat would be for, uh, you know, uh, a, a Dallas Cowboys game on the secondary market. Mm-hmm. If you if you uh, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Is that the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is that the same? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> want, me, want me to? Look very quickly here. Mm. I can look very quick. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it's okay. got to be huge. Okay. I'm, I won't even go to a, a game that's considered, you know, uh, I, I decided to go to a, the hot matchup because the because uh, Miami won. I mean, the, that's the buzz. Miami won 70 to 20. Boy. And the Bills wow. won 37 to 3. You know, so you look at it and they're like, okay, two high scoring teams. All right. And, you you know, you look at it right now, the teams that are being talked about. Right now, this week would be Kansas City, Buffalo, and uh, and uh, in Miami. Mm-hmm. But this is—I'm mm-hmm. uh, looking here. This is New New England. Okay, uh, two tickets. Uh, this is be new. Wow. It's be New England at uh, uh, New England at uh, at uh, Dallas. Okay, I'm like thirty-eight bucks, forty for standing room. Where you can't even see the game. Yeah, actually, you look at the video it's uh, it's over at Six Flags. Actually, it's not even on the premises. <laughs> and they they'll have they'll give you a they'll take you to a place where people are watching it on the TV. 
Okay, all right, I'm getting down to, you know, the lower bowl. The regular season game, yeah. $765. Wow, wow. there you Eight, go. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. Red Eye Radio, more on the IRS coming up. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Good morning. So, (laughs) I did more searching, and and this is on uh, the story out there that if you resell concert tickets and make a profit on it, the IRS wants their cut from now on. Uh Uh-huh. And to give you an example, because they say sales of over 600, and most people would say, well, you know... Oh no! When you look at con- when you look at concert tickets and when you look at sporting tickets, and so uh, I gave an example of you know what is you know presumed to be one of the hottest games this week, Miami and Buffalo, and you know you would uh, ticket prices that could be you know eight hundred dollars, you know for one ticket, and so you can see that if you sell two tickets, you're way over that six hundred dollars to begin with. And then I went to the Cowboys game, New England. This is October first, New England. Against the Cowboys. <laughs> and I found some $800, $900 tickets. Just found $1,600 for a ticket. Oh, that one, though, is inside the stadium. <laughs> so, of course. 1000 So, both tickets would be $3,200. So, you can see how you're going to have a ton of people going, huh? And yeah. Just another example of of why I do not like income taxes. It gives the government the ability through what most people believe is a, you know, is a legitimate reason, the collection of taxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about the collection, collection, the collection of taxes is viewed as legitimate. But this is the collection of taxes which is which is a legit cause, but because of the tax means the government can get into every little stinking aspect of your life. And that's why I think the I think it eventually has to go. You know, whether it's a sales tax, what you do, I don't you know, I don't know. Well, you know what accelerates the 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 uh the backlash and and the greater support for the the backlash against the IRS and the greater support for eliminating the income tax is the gig economy that we are in today. I'm just going to say that that more people are getting involved in it, and I believe in the future it'll even increase because it's not just that people are doing a number of different things and uh, wanting to get paid, you know, uh, immediately for doing those things and with. Uh, jobs like Uber and and other things, you know, they get paid. They get paid every day. But that's changing everything in the payroll world of corporate America. Collectively, they're looking at it and going, employees, not contractors, not our Uber drivers, not our employees, our regular employees. They're wanting to get paid like you work a day, you get paid at the end of, end of the day. How do you make that work? Well, it's a lot more difficult if you're an employee. But that's the drive. Employees are asking about this. This is why the conversation, I have uh, two uh, payroll experts in my family, and that's a, a, an ongoing conversation because it's changing. It is not just generational. It's 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 where we are in how the technology works with how we make money or send money or receive money. And 
It's also not, if you look at it, you know, between Venmo, uh, PayPal, Cash App, and Zelle, and everything else, people can, boom, send somebody money, and it lands in their bank account, like now. And that's the immediacy of it. And then when the IRS says, wait, we want to ask you about every single transaction, because over the the year, you had more than $600 in transactions. This is what the previous conversation was all about. Well, the millionaires and billionaires. No, it's not. It's 600 bucks. So when you look at it, I could see more and more people, and this will be, I think, primarily generational, that will jump on board where conservatives have been for a long time. I don't know how long it would take, but I, I'm with you. I think eventually the income tax would have to go away because people look at it and go, you're not going to be watching over me like a hawk getting into my business. And basically, forget 80,000 additional IRS employees. I mean, you'd have to have them sitting on every block in America ready to audit. What did you just do? I saw you on your phone. What were you doing? Were you making money? I mean, that's where we are. It's big brother all in your business. Well, if if I paid somebody, it doesn't mean that I made money at doing it. When, when I when I but or you they still, made money, but, but you still have to prove it exactly because they're not. That's gonna, the difference. That you're you're going to have to prove it, and right. so if you have, for example, if you get, let's say, you sold a ton of tickets right. in a particular year. Remember, right. season tickets. I and this goes back a long time ago. I remember that I would go to a few Dallas Mavericks games a year. Mm -hmm. And back then, we're talking 15 years ago, I'd Mm -hmm. get really good seats, but I only go once or twice a year. Right. Because there's no reason, in my opinion, any there wasn't back then, and there isn't even now with the massive TV screens everybody can have, there's no reason to buy a ticket in the upper deck. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Your weight, you can't see anything. And so, but, and so I would go twice a year and probably pay back then. Probably it's a three, $400 ticket. Now it was like 150, 160, hmm. but I only go a couple times a year because I love basketball and I wanted to be down close. But then when the announcers in the NBA started screaming at you and mm-hmm. telling you that it's time to cheer and why to cheer and how to cheer and then chastising you, uh, not for cheering. And at that point, I realized, why are they doing it? And then I realized, well, wait a minute, NBA is actually popular in cities that are liberal and they believe you're too stupid and you don't know how to you, cheer. You don't even know how to cheer yeah, you know on your own cheer. team. So, yeah. again, of course, they have to advise you how to do it. It just got annoying and I stopped, you know, I just, I stopped going years ago. Uh, but I remember that they called me, the Mavericks called me and said, we see you're buying tickets to the, uh, the, the game. Would you like season tickets or a half, whatever? And I said, well, no, it's way too expensive for it. And I said, well, we can get you some great deals in the upper deck. I go, well, why? It's on TV. Right. Well, what I want to, if I'm going to watch the Jumbotron anyway, I'll right. watch it in my living right. room. Why, why would I want to be way, way up there? And then, right. you know, we can get you tickets for $64 or 50 whatever it was, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> up in heaven. Well, I can watch it on my TV. Mm-hmm. And and so for me, there's no there's no sale there. It just, it doesn't, it doesn't work. But But you look at it. And you can you can be paying just for your season tickets, and a lot of people will get season tickets and sell half of them. I'm going to go to half the games because I can do it and I can make a little bit of a profit. Mm. A, a buddy of mine, when when I uh, when I left uh, Buffalo in '97, uh, a buddy of mine, you know, actually, uh, you know, would get you know got season tickets, or excuse me, I had season tickets. And then I just gave them to him. You know, I didn't, you know, I said, look, take my season tickets, okay, if you want them. Mm-hmm. And uh, he actually bought them from me at, at, you know, face value, just paid me face value for it because I had great seats and he couldn't get those seats. He did it for about five years, but he sold them all the time. I mean, he, yeah, said, he right. would sit there and go, I can't go, I can't go. Him selling the tickets paid for his season tickets. Yeah, okay. And, and so, um, and and so I mean what a you know what a what a great deal it is and he'd sit there and go all right and this is when <laughs> this is when New England was winning all the time and it was like oh I can make up almost all of the cost of my season tickets <laughs> and this is his quote 
by selling it to some idiot in New England who wants to pay six hundred dollars per ticket. Right. There you <laughs> and go. I think the ticket back then was like this goes this goes back a long time ago. So twenty years ago when they mm-hmm. first started making them, mm-hmm. you know, they they got really good. So he's probably paying I don't know, it was a hundred dollar a ticket maybe back then. Yeah. Right. And so he's making a ton of cash off of it. Yeah. <laughs> but you look at it now these days people will spend twenty thousand dollars and you're talking people in the middle class that their entire enjoyment is and then they also do the calculated thing i'm going to buy hockey tickets i'm going to buy season tickets so i get a great seat but i'm going to sell half of them in order to make it affordable for me now the irs is coming your way then yeah you're going to be scrutinized that's and you've now started the process of having to explain that to the IRS. You know, this is exactly where we are. And when Janet Yellen was talking about the whole every $600 bank deposit thing, you know, everybody was calling them out on it. And now you get into this, uh, you know, level of, again, ticket sales of 600 bucks. That's the ticket sales, not That's the, the profit yep. you made. That's going to be reported. Right. You're going to get it. If you do that, then the platform you sold them on is going to have to send you a 1099. You're going to have to report Which that means on your taxes. If I decide to go on Ticketmaster or StubHub or whatever, am mm-hmm. I going to have to give everybody my social security number? Only if you're selling, not if you're buying. If you're buying, right. no. that's what I. Well, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. I, I've got the seller, because mm-hmm. that's the one that's yep. making the profit. Your tax ID yeah. number or your, yeah. if you're a company, or your yeah. social security number. Yep. Let's go to Tom in Naples, Florida. Tom, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey, boys. How are you? Good. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just a little curious on one thing. Where is the burden of proof that you made the profit? If you're like, okay, you go to Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. You know, I mean, back in the day, also from Buffalo, Gary, left in 98, oh. um, you know, you had scalpers outside of concert tickets oh, yeah. or concert venues with tickets. Yeah. You know, everything was cash. And I think this is a perfect segue to why they're pushing digital currency. Oh, no, they are actually, yeah, no, they actually are moving very quickly on digital currency. They just have to get Congress in a group to basically move in the same direction to the point that they can get a bill passed into law. Yeah, no, this is this is exactly where they. I'm just trying to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out how they prove you made money. I mean, you, I hate to quote Joe Biden because he's an idiot, but well, show you, me the money. It's not the and, money. well. See, there's the problem with the IRS and income, it, the income tax, uh, and and 1099 revenue. You have to prove that you didn't if you're saying if because you'll get if it's 600 or more and you're the seller the platform that you sell through will be sending you the 1099 and also they'll send the same thing to the irs they're reporting it to the irs basically and then you've got to report that on your taxes and then if you're going to say i took a loss you have to prove it that's how it works with the irs how how do you, you have to prove it? They have gonna, to prove that you're, you're going to have to show. I, you know, you're going to have to yeah. show that when you bought the tickets for eight hundred and sold them for six hundred, you're going to have to have a receipt where you paid eight hundred for them and didn't make the uh, didn't make the profit. That's how it yeah. works. I, I could imagine that they because you do uh, you do make a good question. How would they know if you sold it for uh, you know a hundred or whatever? Mm. And I I don't know if that information is going to be put on those particular ticket platforms or not what oh, the no, original it, price was yeah. as to what the what the, the, the price final, you sold it's, it it's, for it's based on sales not what you listed them for no no i i i, I know but again. i know but will the will the will the will this 1099 have to be these are the these are the total sales you made from this was the price of the t- oh, the total of the tickets mm-hmm. that they would add them all up this was the original price of the tickets here's you know, and so you sold a thousand dollars worth of tickets last year. A, a and, platform you know, you, may you, try you, and the, have a the, self-reporting, the, but I doubt you. Where you're, what you're saying is that, like, the seller would say, "I bought these for a hundred, and I'm selling them for two hundred, 
And then if they do that several times over the year, then their profit is only this. That's the platforms are not going to get into that part. Well, that and, and so the I, then you've got eighty thousand IRS new agents are yep. going to be looking and saying, yep. okay, you sold you sold ten thousand dollars worth of, of tickets and claimed you didn't make any profit on any of it. If you we're yeah. going to do an audit now. Exactly. What they do in the audit Charity. to what what they Charity. do in the what Charity. Uh, I get, you know, I'm a nonprofit. It's a charity organization. Well, the, I mean, you you can list it as a charity organization, but then you have to set it up where the money goes straight to the charity and everything else. That's legal. You can do that. I mean, yeah, you, can't, right you can't lie about it and get away with it. I mean, you might actually be able to lie about it and get away with it, but uh, the IRS will still scrutinize with you. You're, you're still going to have to set it up as a non, non-profit. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still coming... I'm still coming back to the burden of proof. The burden I mean, we are supposed this is to the way it works in the IRS. Guilty, right? This is it. This is the way it works now. When you talk about now, not everybody is audited, and so really, if you're talking about the burden of proof, now you're taking the gamble. If you say, "Well, they're never going to look, they're never going to audit me," and you want to take the gamble of not having that proof, but you know, in the back of your mind, you lost money on it. And you just don't have the paperwork or whatever. You know, I guess you could take that risk. But if you get audited, there is going to be a burden of proof where you well, have to prove that you lost money on the deal. Well, not lost money, but if you just broke even. Either way. Or broke that even. you didn't make because, proceeds. Because, right. if, because if, or if, you didn't if, make profits. If, but, if you, yeah. but if you just sit there and said, I broke even, mm-hmm. and the IRS says, well, we demand to see the tickets, I don't have the tickets anymore. Mm-hmm. Then, well, you would have to have a receipt. Of what you paid for the tickets, but if, I paid six hundred, and if, I sold them for six. But if you didn't, what are they going to do? You're going to be penalized. You have to have a receipt. You have to all, have all your receipts. So when you, you do will, your tax. So you will be penalized for something that they can't prove. That yeah, you can't prove. The, the burden of proof exactly. isn't on them. That's where's the, the problem right, with right. the IRS. It, it, it's always well, been it's it, this way well, now. What's the penalty based on? It's it's this way now. The money that if you're claiming, and thanks for the call. If you're claiming that. You know that you have receipts for this and and that and deductions here. If you still itemize, you have to have those receipts. Eight six six ninety red eye. This owner operator driver report is brought to you by Shell Rotella. Shell Rotella with advanced synthetic technology is designed to help keep your rig running with more mileage and less maintenance. Surviving and thriving as an owner operator has just as much to do with managing costs as it does with generating revenue. Understanding basic principles of operating costs can save you thousands of dollars a year. Costs are not the same each month. If 9,600 miles are driven one month and 10,000 miles the next, two different sets of costs apply for each month. For example, if your tractor payment is $1,850 per month and you drive 9,600 miles in the month, your tractor payment is costing you 19.3 cents per mile. Drive 10,000 miles, though, and that same payment will cost you 18.5 cents per mile. This is one of your major fixed costs while paying off a truck loan. The difference in this example is only a fraction of a cent, which may seem like small change, but it ultimately amounts to $960 more annually on the bottom line. Because though fixed costs do not go down over time, you can reduce your cost per mile with more paid miles. This report is brought to you by FPPF Fuel Power Max. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley. I'm Gary McNamara. Here's a question. I think this is where the caller was going because it still hasn't been answered. Because mm-hmm. you were talking about deductions that you can't take the deductions if you itemize. Well, this would be a deduction right. if you, the cost of the tickets versus the sale. That's the same thing. Right. But if you if you have no records... Yet they've got you selling ten thousand dollars worth of tickets. Better keep your receipts. Uh, but what do they charge you on? What's the penalty on? Or do they say, "Sorry, no, that's they, ten thousand in income." If you don't, if if you don't claim, if you don't pay that tax, you know, if you're, it, let's say you don't claim it, because if you don't claim it, that there's a, a another problem. And if you don't claim it, and you're saying, "Well, I'm not going to claim it because I didn't make any money on it, I lost money on it," but you can't prove that. Then they'll charge you with the penalty, whatever penalty applies for not paying that tax. Well, well how much tax? You don't know what the tax is, though. No, on on six hundred uh, on the the amount that's on that's, the report so on the ten ninety nine. That was my point. So if, 
if you've sold a total of $10,000 mm-hmm. in tickets, mm-hmm. you're going to receive a penalty or you need to pay interest or, or whatever taxes yeah. on $10,000. Yes. yes. Oh, and it's wow. not just a regular income wow. tax rate, okay. by the way. All right. All right. That's what I wondered. Yes. How they would do that. All right. Call in and get a word in edgewise. Eric Harley and Gary McNamara on Red Eye Radio. And he's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Well, yeah, I guess y- your scenario is the only way that it could go. Oh, no, by the no, way, that's... we're Red Eye Radio. Download our Red Eye Radio app. Listen <laughs> when and where you want if you can't listen live overnight. Sorry, but I'm just I'm fascinated by how this will infuriate so many Americans because if you're talking about for concert tickets or sports tickets, if you sell them on the secondary market, it's going to be reported to the IRS. Yeah. So yeah. the fact is, that even if you're selling them mm-hmm. and the goal is not to make a profit, just get rid of them and recoup it. Uh-huh. That's going to go on that 1099. Yep. And so we use just the example of $10,000. And mm-hmm. if you sold $10,000 worth of tickets, but you sold all of them for 10000 mm-hmm. well, you put it on the 1099. And the question from our great caller uh, from Buffalo, uh, originally from Buffalo, but from mm-hmm. Naples, Florida, Tom, mm-hmm. was... Well, how do they figure it out? They don't need to figure it out. They simply no, no. take that that number, 10000 And they, see if you paid taxes they, on it. Right. They come to you and say, you didn't pay any taxes on it. Uh, because the question is... No, no, no. no, no they, they come to you and say, $10,000, you know, show me your records. You don't have the records. You pay taxes on $10,000, even though you didn't make any profit off it. As you're doing your taxes or somebody else is doing your tax, somebody, uh, th- they're going to ask you or the software will ask you, do you have any 1099 forms? Did you receive any 1099 forms? Yes. And then you fill that in and, you know, all the numbers and everything else. Do you have any, um, uh, essentially any deductions, not deductions, but expenses to claim against these earnings. That's usually how it's phrased. And then you would say, because if it's a 1099 type contractor thing, there are certain things you can write off like mileage on your vehicle, but you're going to have to have a long history and show that you consistently kept the mileage on your vehicle and everything else. The point is, is that it will say, so let's say you had $1,000 in ticket sales. It will ask, do you have any expenses to, you know, to claim against these earnings for this? It's basically a business. You know, at that point, you're, they're asking you to claim it as a business. Well, uh, no, I don't. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to pay the taxes on that $1,000. If you do... How much is it? And you fill that in. Now, there's the point from that point on, it becomes a matter of if someone's doing your taxes for you, a service, they're likely going to ask you, they're going to say, you need to have your receipts and give them to us. Uh, While you sign that tax return, regardless of who prepares it for you, uh, that's something that, you know, really is on you and you should probably have. I've never claimed anything. Things that I knew but couldn't find a receipt for, it was like, I'm not going to claim it. Because if I don't have the paper, if I don't have or the electronic receipt, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to, because I don't want to be sitting across, I've never been audited, but if I were, and they're saying, well, you say you have expenses against this in this business, what would they be? And if you have $1,000 in ticket purchases against the thousand dollars in revenue, you didn't make any money. There was no, right. there was no revenue. Right. There was no income, so you won't pay a dime in taxes. But if you don't have the records, right? But that's then, the case then you, now. Then, then you have right. But this is unique because those tickets that you have didn't just appear. That isn't something that you earned. That's not. It's not actual income. Because you, ninety nine point nine percent of the people, and I don't know what the exception is, a ticket that they sold is a ticket that they bought. Yeah. That's a that's a given. It's not mm-hmm. the same as even being a contractor and making ten thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You know, you made ten thousand dollars. It's the deduction. Here, you have to prove that you purchased those tickets and mm-hmm. what price. You purchase them for. That's why we or, have a and, problem with right, it. Yeah. And, right, and uh, and and otherwise, if you don't, then you've got to pay 
the full cost of what you sold the ticket for. Mm-hmm. So the paperwork you're going to need to the be burden involved is in, always and on the, you, and and the burden that you're going to yeah. have is just going to infuriate for six hundred bucks. Yeah, and and then that's like that's the, like in 2019 <laughs> numbers. You know, if you adjust for inflation, that's like four dollars. <laughs> But here's the other thing, too, with the 80,000 IRS agents. Then you're the level of, for example, uh, of you know, I, I look at my, my taxes and it's like, okay, I'm not getting audited. Mm-hmm. Why am I not getting audited? Because 99.9% of what they I put down there, they already have a record of. Right. And I use a false address. Right. There are a number of reasons <laughs> I won't get <laughs> but, but But it's, so it's very easy. But what will be... What will be the benchmark that that triggers an audit on concert tickets or sports tickets reselling? For example, mm-hmm. you look at it and it's like, okay, I sold uh, twenty or you, uh, basically I sold twenty thousand dollars worth of tickets because I'm yeah. assuming this is going to be a, a brand new ten ninety nine that's different than anything else. I don't know if that's the case. Okay, but all right, but. You know, so but there it is. Boom, there mm-hmm. twenty thousand uh, dollars, and that's it. I pay no taxes on it. Right. What triggers the audit? How? What is the? What is the? Because it's going to have to be an amount that triggers that audit. Well, sometimes it's random. Aud- audits can be random, but but usually there are flags where you you've got you list so many different like expenses and deductions and things. One of the biggest things uh, I'm told. With a uh, from a uh, someone close to me that does taxes for a living is claiming the home office over the years, mm-hmm. you know, claiming the home right. office. Um, but if you just go and you've got, you know, tons of receipts and you're, you know, and you're lowering your tax bill to, you know, way, way down every year based on where you started and all these deductions. That's going to trigger an audit, right? But you're not yeah. lowering anything here. Mm-hmm. You're you're just reporting what. You well, s- no. If you had a hundred thousand dollars in ticket sales as an individual, mm-hmm. right, and you claim you lost ten thousand dollars on the deal, okay, yeah, then they're going to yeah. come. Yeah. But if yeah. you've lost nothing, if you just mm-hmm. stayed even, they're still going to come after the taxes because oh, no, my, they want my, the my, taxes. It's my, about my, what you right. Claim. But my point is, if you're you're saying it can be random, well, if I get. Well, that's just one if, example. I right, mean, but, it no, starts but, there. No, but my I'm, no, my point I'm trying to get to is if I'm being, I'm being audited randomly, mm-hmm. but I'm still in a certain section. If I file the easy form and they've got everything, what are they going to do with? The, they're not going to audit me. They audit me for what? Everything is no. They may no. They the the likelihood of audits is, is still very low. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But what triggers an audit? is a certain level, as you just said, for example, if you're doing the home office, that's what triggers it is that you've taken that deduction. Because Mm -hmm. if I file the easy form and everything, all the evidence they need to know on my taxes is Mm -hmm. on my taxes, I'm not going to get an audit. I'll never get audited. Because they've got got everything. We're going to come out to your house. We're going to come. You need to come into our office. Or in the old days, they actually used to come to your house. Well, but it's, <laughs> but, you know, it, it's and, and so, when it comes to 1099s in general, it's different than just deductions that you you take against your uh, regular earnings of your W-2 earnings. Right. But if I don't take any deductions, if I don't itemize, if I don't itemize. Well, but, this, but the 1099 part of it would be different than itemizing for your W-2 income. Because oh, it's going to oh, ask you about this type of revenue. It's a different type of revenue. Well, I know, but if you don't have any 1099s, is my point. And mm-hmm. the majority of people still file easy. They have right. an employer. They work for an employer. That's it. Mm-hmm. They just tell. They sell tickets on the side. That's selling tickets on the side. You know, in order to you know, uh, they buy season tickets. They they want to go to half the games and mm-hmm. selling the other games plays for it entirely. Mm-hmm. Well, you can't have that because then. You, the the uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, income getting those tickets for free mm-hmm. is actually income at that mm-hmm. point mm-hmm. if that's what it's paid for. But if you're just file, you know, the easy the easy form, whatever, mm-hmm. no itemizing, no anything, everything's there. What will trigger it will be that 1099 for the tickets. That will make you more likely to be audited. And so my uh, my my point on that yeah. is, what will that level be? Yeah, there will be it, some level that 
it, will and trigger it depends the IRS. On, it depends on how big the numbers are on that 1099. Right. That, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and so what will that number be, I mean, be, if it's $1,200 or $1,500... Then you, everybody's getting then you, everybody's you, getting audited. Who no, no, no. I don't think actually, actually no. I think if it's a hundred thousand dollars, and then you're claiming you took a loss. Now, if you do this repeatedly, you know, and there's a pattern of saying, "Okay, I'm do, doing this on a regular basis." Now, this could apply to season that season ticket holder scenario. Yeah. Well, you said uh, you said twelve hundred dollars, so I thought you were setting the level. Yeah. No, no, oh, no, I thought no, I thought you said twelve hundred dollars. I mean, that was it, a level you know, being set by be, the IRS. Because if you do, it, no, 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 it's no, it would be. Um, it, there really is, there is no set level. There are certain red flags. Well, that's my point. Then, whether it's a mm-hmm. level or a red flag, what mm-hmm. will be it? Well, I'm just, I'm not asking you to answer the question for me. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, what will that flag level well B that's that's been that will, that's that been, will set it off that's been the question for the for the ages in terms of audits right. yeah absolutely and for those of us who get 1099s on a regular basis it's always been because like i won't do the mileage on my truck why well because if you do get audited you better have a log with the mileage on it and it better be consistent and the mileage is or the mileage that you can write off uh, against that 1099 revenue isn't everyday mileage unless you're working every day to earn that 1099 revenue. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, it's insane. This is why we need to abolish the IRS. And, but uh, that's why, because of when I thought it was important to distinguish between the a deduction which you can't prove, but they know what the income is. The income is absolute. Mm-hmm. You don't know what the income is when you put I income made, versus uh, expenses in this case. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't know what the income is. All you mm-hmm. know is all you know is what you've sold something. Uh, uh, you know, for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I, and I was, by the way, I was thinking the other day too with all this going on because this came out like last Thursday or Friday and over the weekend. There's a bunch of, you know, garage sales. I'm mm-hmm. like, when will the IRS tap into garage sales? Oh, yeah. And then how do you figure it out? Well, oh, no. I well, mean, I, well yeah. I originally bought it for this and I sold it for this. Right. But the depreciation on it, so you, depreciation on it, so I'm basically breaking even. Well. So you're basically, are, are you going to be taxing me now for something that I sold or that I bought or that I originally bought with taxable income? If Janet it, it Yellen was, had her way, yeah. You know, and, and, and so I'm like, where will they go you know, where will they go on this? And well, so- this is why when they started talking about uh, the billionaire tax where they would take the wealth, conf- confiscate the wealth, and people like Elizabeth Warren were promoting this idea. What it actually would require then is an audit of valuation of everything you own, even if you're not a billionaire. Because you think about this, wherever they set the level, Right. What if tomorrow, I I mean, we've seen it before. Uh, Mark Cuban was not always a billionaire, right? And uh, the guy they call uh, Notch, the the gamer guy that invented, you know, a couple of the huge games, sold his business, I think, to Microsoft for $1.92 billion, somewhere in there. Well, he wasn't a billionaire before that. And then, so what would you have to do? And what you would have to audit everyone because what would happen theoretically if they discovered, you know, a gold mine in in my backyard and I had the mineral rights and all of a sudden I'm worth two billion. What they have to do is they have to audit the valuation of assets. And they would have to do that repeatedly for everyone to determine there's not a finite uh, amount or number of billionaires. The people on that list, while you see some common names year to year, it does change, which means anybody could be audited. That was the problem with that whole thing. You're giving the IRS the ability in that case to come in and then basically do an assessment of valuation on everything you own. The IRS should be gone. 866-90-RED-EYE. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara, 866-90 of uh, uh, Red Eye. 
Oh, man. The IRS stuff. Jeez. I well, no, I mean, you know, that's, I, that's I just, really it, think that this could be one of those things. You said it earlier, but I really believe when uh, you're thinking more and more about it, that this could be that this kind of beginning. And we're in an age where people are, uh, you know, they're selling things on Facebook Marketplace. They're selling things, uh, turning tickets around or whatever it is. And it could be a side gig or it could be just a quick way to get rid of something. And there's money going back and forth. And then the IRS, whoa, what do you got there? This whole idea of we want to look at everything you're doing. Because you ask, okay, but what triggers an audit? Well, I don't know. Why do we need 80,000 more IRS agents? I, I think they would, if the Democrats had their way, they'd hire, you know, even more than that, a lot more than that. And they would be in everybody's business. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America and around the planet, we are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. And so talking about the uh, new IRS rule th- for this year, by the way, I mean. If this earnings year, yep. Yeah, if, so if you're, earning, if, if, you're, uh, if you're selling concert tickets, sports tickets, whatever, or if you're on a lot of other different platforms selling things, mm-hmm. this is going to hit you, and you better keep records. And you just, how many do, do they believe are going to be sent out of this new 1099? The estimate by the Wall Street Journal, I'm reading this report from the Wall Street Journal from just a couple of days ago, is 44 million of these forms. Because you and I started asking, you know, for example, uh, you know, I, I started talking about garage sales. What about garage sales online where you go on to eBay? You, know, you go on to eBay and uh, you Wall say, Street Journal lists that. eBay, yeah. Etsy? Right. Because I, I sit and think, I want to. I want to get rid of all of my records mm-hmm. or I want to get rid of all of my CDs. Right. Because I put everything on digital. Right. And this is something I've actually thought about. I, mean, I just can't let them go, though. It's like, well, I don't know. They're like, uh, they're, they're like treasures that nobody ever will look at, ever. <laughs> but I've got over a thousand CDs mm-hmm. that I bought during the years. Right. So I bought them with uh, money that from my income that's already been taxed. Mm-hmm. So let's say I want to sell a thousand of them and I end up making, uh, let's, let's say everyone, just to make it easy, I make $10 each and that's $10,000. Is that income? Well, you, you could make that just on your Backstreet Boys collection alone. And there's the, there's the key. On my Taylor Swift collection. <laughs> so, but, but, but that's but, the key. Is yeah. that is well because there's the difference. How's so, that? So how, if yeah. you're if you've got an eBay business and a lot of people do, uh, I know somebody who with a, an Etsy business, right? And they make things and sell it on Etsy. Well, you should be expecting that you're going to pay taxes on that. But for the person who decides that they're going to do the online garage sale, I think there's a great way to put it. By the way, yeah, like and they're that. just um, because. <laughs> I remember years ago, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, he was uh, talking about, he goes, I get the feeling that I could put a bag full of couch lint on eBay and make money. He goes, I was selling all these individual, (laughs) it's it's really when eBay was first kind of booming and everybody was, Mm -hmm. and he was, you wouldn't believe what people will buy and they'll pay $2 for these. I'm not throwing anything away ever again, but. That kind of thing, right, where you're going, all right, time to clean out the closets. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to go on to Facebook Marketplace or eBay or wherever, and we're going to get rid of all these things. And 
then you make, uh, you know, you have more than $600 in sales. There's the difference. Yeah. You're not setting it up as a business. It isn't revenue. And these aren't things, and it says, you know, well, the 1099K form that you'll receive and and, and these and this new tax law isn't designed to go after reimbursements. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But how do you determine a reimbursement without the auditing? Pro- You've got to go through the hoop and jump through the hoops with the IRS, yeah. and you shouldn't have to do that. I don't have any receipts for my CDs that right. I bought. Right. I have none. No, you wouldn't. I've, yeah, of course, I have. I have. Well, let me go back to 1989 and pull out my, uh, you know, receipt for that Kajagoogoo CD. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I don't even think they had receipts back when the Partridge family put everything yeah, exactly. on. <laughs> well, how? How? And how much is my? You know, you. But then here's the other thing, too, when you think about it, mm-hmm. all the different things that you normally, if you're in business, deal with, for example, the depreciation yeah, uh, of, uh, you know, for example, is the Partridge family, is my Partridge family, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is my Partridge family album now worth more since David Cassidy died? I mean... <laughs> Well, okay. no, but, but I mean, how do you, but, but that, that shouldn't really be a thing because I can't tell you what I paid for any of those. Uh, right. But I'm not, my goal is not to make a profit. I've put them on eBay and people are bidding for it. How do you know? Because I bought that already with money that had been taxed by the federal government. They already yeah. got their revenue on it. Right. I can't prove what it is. They mm-hmm. cannot. There's how how can they uh, constitutionally mm-hmm. tax me for something that I bought? And and, and how, you can't and, prove and, 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 how, and, and, and it's and, that and, reasonable that you should right. and how have can, to prove it? And how can the because think about this: the hardship they would co- would cost causes. You can't sell anything that you bought mm-hmm. unless you have the receipts from the things that you bought. Right. And how many of us have the receipts that we bought from anything five years ago back? Right. right. We don't. Because they don't know. You could be lying and, and you could have, uh, I don't know, inherited, you know, the <laughs> CDs from a family member. Or you were just given them and you didn't pay a thing for them. Right. The Partridge family. It's like mm-hmm. my sister's had to get... We don't, we don't want him anymore. I mean, exactly. You know, David. Cash, well, it's, it's funny that we're talking about this because uh, I was at a place. The lady, nice lady was cutting my hair today and we were talking about I was talking about how my granddaughters earn money and save money and the whole thing. And, and you know, generationally, how how do they think about, you know, having a savings and spending money and everything else? And she said, I have two children. I have a girl and a boy and her son collects the what are they? they're they're the. uh Funko Pop little figurines are like they make different ones. My daughter has a bunch of uh, Star Wars characters in the Funko Pop thing. And the idea is that some of them are more collectible. So this goes back, I mean, to baseball cards, right? Uh, It goes back to uh, little uh, the (laughs) California Raisins. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Um, Cabbage Patch dolls and everything else. And so when you look at that uh, Pokemon and, you know, that would be different. That would be like an investment in a collectible. But let's say, because she she tells me, my son, he's only eager to make money when he wants a certain Funko Pop. If there's one that he really wants to buy, then he'll say, mom or dad, can I, you know, do something for some extra money to buy it? And as soon as he gets that money, he goes out and he buys it. I said, yeah, but, you know, it, he's investing it. I mean, if, if they do turn out to be valuable, he keeps them in the box, she said. He preserves them the way you're supposed to for collectibles. But how would he prove? Let's say, let's say five years goes by. Because uh, he's a, she said he's a teenager now. Let's just say uh, several years go by and he's then... Filing taxes, he's got a job. But he sells his Funko Pop 
collection. And it turns out he's got the only one of uh, whatever artist or whatever character. And then it's worth then a million dollars or it's worth, I don't know. Let's just say it's worth a thousand dollars. That'd be a great investment if you pay, you know, 20 bucks for something or 10 bucks for something. And a few years later, it's worth a thousand. Well, do you have your receipt? You know, do you have you, what can you write off against that? If you're going to sell things of (laughs) couch lint, (laughs) these are the things that it's, we're, we're, we're going out of our way to demonstrate the, the, we're making absurd points to demonstrate the absurdity of the IRS getting into everybody's business at this level, because you're really not, if, if your revenue if they're starting this at six hundred, six hundred dollars a year is not a business, not a good one. No, so you can't make the claim that well they're you know blah 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 and they're yeah that's that's if an individual's turning it around and then they've got got a, I think your CD collection is the perfect analogy because it's not reasonable for you to have to prove that you had to forego that expense of that purchase, you know, whatever years ago, and then have to, that you have to prove that you didn't make a profit when you sell the whole collection for 10,000. Right. And you spent 20,000, 30,000 over the years buying CDs. And, and, and you, and you have to go th- and you have to go through the, uh, wow, I never thought about that. When you have thousand CDs, if I paid, if I paid $15 for them each, I paid, yeah. I spent fifteen thousand dollars on music in my. Yeah. That's just in my right. CD Plus life. Taxes and all. That, yeah. <laughs> you, you just you know, yeah. and when every week when every week goes by, or you, know, you just buy a couple of CDs a month, you don't right. realize what it eventually right. adds up to. Right. But it's not absurd because it, in in a way, be, because where we are now is because of these third party platforms that exist. Mm. It's the government being able to monitor every oh, yeah. single financial Absolutely. transaction Absolutely. that you make or and an then attempting yep. to col- what I say. No, no, I'm just throwing that in. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and every, every single financial decision you make, the government is involved of how do we tax it? Right. And then, and then how do you get to the point of proof? Cause it's one thing to prove it's one thing to prove on absolute income that you're sure of because your employer's reporting to it and the deductions that you wish to take on it, you know, to sit there and go, well, is that deduction real? And you need to prove that. Mm-hmm. Well, what they're, what they're assuming is you're making income that isn't necessarily income. Mm-hmm. They can't prove it's, it, that, it's, that, it's, that it's income in the traditional form of, of income, it's you selling something in an online garage sale, right? And and when you and I think you, what also needs to be understood is we keep talking about the six hundred dollars in sales, but if you're talking about concert tickets, four concert tickets that you, as we said, you may sell them for two hundred dollars each, and you bought them for one hundred eighty dollars. You're talking about the government wanting to make sure that on individual citizens they get the taxes on fifty to eighty dollars. If that's yeah. the mentality of government then it's not absurd to say that they will go after everything because if they're going to go after 50 to $80 in taxes to tax 50 to $80 in income, then what won't they go after and what kind of a disaster? We know what the IRS has done. Oh, yeah. We know what yeah, the IRS, yeah, we, yeah, we've, yeah. we've seen what the IRS has done. We've seen the politics of the IRS. We we know how oppressive they can be for people. And now we're there. The Congress is letting them into areas where you're talking about income that nobody really can prove whether it's income or not. Well, here's yet, the thing. Yet, yet they're they're saying that's an unreasonable task to say. Well, you need to prove that this isn't all income, right. Without any, you know, purchase that had happened before. Well, we've and been. How do you? How the hell do you do that? People have been selling things on eBay since the 1800s, <laughs> somewhere along there, and so all of a sudden, and, and I mean the garage sale type thing. You know, the, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of the CD collection. And you know what? Somebody may want to buy it from me, but they're not the people that also are used to getting a 1099 form. And then they get one. They're like, oh, okay, well, what was that from eBay? Well, I don't owe anything on this. What, 
you know, okay, I don't, I don't think I owe anything on this. I don't even know what to do with this. And then you get into, because at that point, I would think, well, now it's not just good enough to have a, a tax software. Maybe I need to hire someone to do my taxes. Or let's say they decide to go the other way and they say, oh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make money. I was just selling, you know, do I need to, do I need to report this? I know the whole thing of the, well, ignorance is no excuse, but the idea is that those are the people they'll be going after. Well, we got a 1099 from eBay that says you did this and you didn't report it. Well, that's tax evasion. But how do you figure out, I mean, just for an example, and understand the reasoning that we see with this law that the government is going after $50 of income. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to tax it because you can make that argument with the $600 limit on taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, what would you really be making for it? Is everybody doubling it? No. If you had four tickets and you paid $184, you may be trying to sell them for $200. Right. And there's a lot of lot of things where you, just because you sell tickets doesn't automatically mean you're going to double or triple what you uh, get. But when talking about, you know, online garage sales that they're also going to be monitoring here now, well, how do you figure out the appreciation and depreciation to use my CD examples of the CDs? Right. How do you get into, how do you get into that? How do you get into number one, you know, the government acknowledging that you purchased these things because there's no way I can prove the vast majority of CDs that I bought in my life. So I cannot prove that I paid for them. They can't come forward and say that's all income and tax me on that. Right. Especially when you have originally paid for those products on income that has already been taxed by the federal government. By the way, the average Ugh. Taylor Swift ticket on secondary market, $1,100 per. Barnum was right. P.T. Barnum was right. Really was. Well, the bigger suckers are the ones, if we as a collective allow the IRS and our yeah. lawmakers to get away with this for very long, this needs to change. By the way. The backlash and confusion last year, this was supposed to be implemented for 2022 earnings. And they put it off because people were like, um, what? 866-90-RED-EYE. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. Hey, Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carly and I'm Gary McNamara talking about the uh, new IRS policy on selling concert tickets, uh, reselling concert tickets on the secondary market and uh, and uh, and sports tickets that other also apply to other platforms, uh, Etsy, eBay, you know, uh, what Amazon, what is it yep. called? Uh the uh, Amazon sellers? Yeah. Uh well, just an Amazon business. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yeah. I thought there was a name for it. But yeah. That, yeah. It's that I thought earlier you'd said there uh, the name. That's all. Uh no. Um there is Amazon Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. That was it. Okay. Um, and that's more of a garage sale thing. And right. Amazon, those are usually small right. businesses. Let's go to Isaac in Connecticut. Isaac, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Hi. How you doing, guys? Good. Good. Um, so this problem, uh, you know, you also have state, state uh, and, and sometimes even city taxes uh, that uh, – I mean, how is that going to play into it? And then also, uh, my state, uh, you know, could could look at look at you and say, well, you're uh, you're actually running an illegal business, and you have to uh, register as a business, and you have to pay uh, sales and use tax. Um, and also, to your other point, uh, with the, uh, with the I, I, IRS is uh, basically. Uh, obsolete. I believe the IRS, the tax code is un, is, is unconstitutional because uh, just the fact that you are forced to make a confession, it, it goes against the Fifth Amendment, and it takes the position where 
you know, you are guilty until you prove your innocence. Okay, but we're not going to get into the constitutional um, issues now. The we kind of see where you're getting. We we, we, we right. understand where the burden of proof shouldn't be on you, right? Uh, because again, but, it's unreasonable at, at, at a certain level. But I, yeah. but I heard your frustration and mm-hmm. and and the 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 initial the initial question that you uh, asked. It all depends if your state decides to tax this. Yeah, on the at, state through, level. Through, yeah. At the state level and when the city decides to tax it. So we don't know where individual cities would go, except I would believe that California, Illinois, and New York would be up for, uh, would be one of the, some of the first states that would want to get in on this revenue also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. State, oh, of, yeah. state of Texas and Florida right. won't affect us. Right. We don't have an income tax. Right. You're listening to Red Eye Radio from the Uniden America Studios. And he is Eric Harley, and uh, I'm Gary McNamara. You know, when when you look at all of this, understand that that what we have seen from the Democrats in the last couple of years because of the IRS, you know, the whole Lois Lerner thing, Mm -hmm. we know that the IRS will target people because of their policies. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we know that the Department of Justice, that, that enforces the law of the IRS, we know they will target because of political beliefs. Mm -hmm. We know it. We know that Hunter Biden, there's no reason you can't find any. And and, in fact, (laughs) the Department of Justice, Merrick Garland, just last week, would answer the question about why you possibly, well, there could be a variety of answers of of why you uh, of 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 why you let the statute of limitations, uh, uh, you know, you know, end on felony charges of tax evasion, and he was just pounded on that one. He's like, no, there's not. Give us an give us a hypothetical. Well, I'm not going into hypotheticals because you can't. Oh, you're, uh, uh, by the way, uh, the the American Rescue Plan Act uh, that is the that that governs this new six hundred dollar threshold yes. tax. Uh, it exempts uh, only one person, and that's Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden, <laughs> exactly. But we know that the we know the IRS will play politics. We know that. We know, for example, the Department of Justice was going after parents. We know because FBI agents testified, whistleblowers. They were sitting in school parking lots. Yeah taking down parents' numbers who were protesting against the insanity mm-hmm. of the the radical transgender movement and the racist critical race theory that boards of educations wanted to bring in the school. That's the problem with all of this. Right. Is it's not just you can't say anymore, well, you know, it's an exaggeration. No. No. We have the evidence Yep. That the IRS will target people because of their politics. Yep. So you sit there and you look right now at the 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 uh, right now at uh, uh, at uh, the, uh, the the IRS and uh, and deductions, mm-hmm. charitable deductions. Mm-hmm. Well, you had my God, you had the uh, the FBI, the Department of Justice, and more than one branch targeting Catholics. Yeah, that's a legit charity that you give to that mm-hmm. you can get a tax deduction for. Well, the IRS gets to know if they wish to who you are giving money to. Oh, yeah. And now we know that they will target you in the most absurd ways. Well, look at the metadata for the NSA, right? Everyone was like, well, it's just phone numbers. They're not listening to calls. You know what kind of pattern they can determine? With all the phone numbers you called? They can set up a pattern of behavior. Who were who were you communicating with? And so the same applies here. Well, I'm I'm giving to Catholic organizations. I'm giving here. I'm giving there. I gave to the Jim Caviezel Foundation. Oh, now we've got questions. <laughs> Jason Aldean Foundation. Okay, you're going to jail. We don't know what you've done, but you're going to jail. You know this is, but this is exactly. That we've seen this weaponization going on for 
years. By the way, we're getting we're getting a lot of uh, input, and I just want to clarify this now. We're getting a lot of input saying that you know you have states and and others that are charging that will charge you sales tax for selling things on eBay or whatever. That's yeah. a different topic. Yeah, yeah. Totally different. Topic. That's a totally different topic than what we're talking about mm-hmm. here. Just so you know, because yeah. we keep getting comments on that. Well, you know, you, you've got to pay sales tax for things that you sell on 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 eBay and Amazon. We know that mm-hmm. that's a sales tax, and yes, there is sales tax on used products, and that's that's a debate to be had. Mm-hmm. But it's not the topic that we're talking about. Yeah. Just so you know, it's a completely right. different topic. Right. So just so we don't get too off of this topic of the brand new IRS rule, then the IRS rule has nothing to do with state income tax. Okay. Right. Just wanted to clarify right. that. Um, so yeah, but, but, but that's why we are, that's why we are, we, uh, we are where we are right now. Mm. When you look at it and you say, okay, so what's the IRS want to do? Well, they want to tax anything that you earn because it's not about $600. No, it's it, because that that's the total sale. It's a tax on the amount of profit that you made on the $600 of tickets that you sold, Mm -hmm. a sporting event, whatever, or $600 of things that you sold that may have only been worth uh, 700, you know, or $700. So they want their cut on the $100. The big lie of all this at the Democrats, and the Democrats know, the Democrats know the problem with this. That's why they kept saying, you know, the White House kept saying, well, this is about billionaires and billionaires and billionaires. Billionaires need to pay their taxes. They were lying to you and saying billionaires because they know how unpopular this would be and how intrusive this will be to individuals out there. And the work and the what you have to do, you know, the things that you have to do to prove to the government that this was not income and man the hoops you're going to have to jump through in order to get there and where the IRS will go in the future and the fact of knowing that the IRS will target you for your politics and your politics gets involved in taxes all the time. Where this also meets a lot of resistance, I think, going forward is going to be those companies where they're, I mean, this is their bread and butter. So now they're going to be burdened, number one, and accounting was sending out these 1099K forms. But beyond that, it is the this feeling of oversight from their average user. And typically when that happens, the average user says, you know what? I'm going to tap the brakes. Maybe I don't use the Cash App as often. Maybe I don't use Venmo as often. Maybe I don't put things on on eBay. Maybe I can sell them somewhere else for cash and the person delivers the cash when I, you know, when they pick something up or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I only sell locally and I'll just communicate a different way. Those then those companies are going to look at it and go, okay, here's the damage based on the drop in participation by our users. This is what's happened. I think it will definitely change things because I don't think many people right now are thinking about this and won't until they start receiving 1099Ks in January of next year. You think we'll be talking about this next spring? Oh, we'll be talking about it by the end of January. February 15th, roughly, when people are going, um, what is this? And certainly by April 15th, because that's when people have to basically reckon with what is going on. Well, again, where's that burden of proof? That's on you. Let's go to Stan in Albuquerque. Stan, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Welcome to the show. Hi, Stan. Hey, fellas. I'm so glad I got through. You guys uh, see me through a lot of light nights. I appreciate you. You're welcome. So I used to be an, an English teacher in both a current communist and former communist country. And I'll tell you what the future is. It'll all be barter and it will all be cash money nothing online uh, except for dark web because that's how that's the only way around so let's let's use your taylor swift ticket idea i have a ticket you want to buy it i don't take cash and i certainly don't do it as an online purchase i meet you at walmart you buy eleven hundred dollars with the gift cards you give it to me transaction done 
I'm invisible. So the person who's going to get squeezed is Joe Everyman, who collected Pokemon cards as a kid. Now he needs to pay for something. He sells them all. He's going to get squeezed, not the professionals. You know, the old saying, build a better mouse truck, make a smarter mouse. Well, I guys aren't going to get. Well, I guess this would be my question then, Stan. For example, if we're talking concert tickets, you're able to, on these apps, reach such a bigger audience Mm -hmm. where the bidding process to buy the tickets probably covers what you would have to pay in taxes. Right. So that that's why it would be tough to go to a cash barter system because how do you get by yourself to the marketplace where you can get higher bids depending on the value of what you're selling? Well, and that's a legitimate question. And there will be cash. So I, I'll never go there again, so I can tell you. I taught in China, and in Beijing and in Shanghai, the young people that have – it's called WePay. Everything is online and everything mm-hmm. is traceable. Mm-hmm. So they don't care because they just live in this crazy. They, they think everything's cool. But the older people, they use cash. So let's say yeah. I want to take the subway. If you've got WePay, you're on that subway in five seconds. If yeah. you're using cash, yep. they have one, one, one machine where you can buy a token. Yeah. So you have 115, I'm exaggerating, you have a, an endless amount of old people who are waiting to use their their their, their <laughs> money, Yeah, and, you know, 15 subways go by. And right. The whole day is spent trying to get on a subway. Right. And that's why they're terrified of blockchain, and that's why they're terrified of anything that uh, other than a digital currency. Yeah. Well, you, you, hit a, you hit a point, because what are we ultimately paying for? We're paying for that convenience. But then we, we take it even further, and we say, all right, in that case, we're paying – you know, for that convenience, I went on quick uh, and and it's so easy and they don't know any other way and they don't really want they don't even want to handle any physical currency or anything else. Then you look at it and it's also opportunity like, OK, I've got these this box of old CDs and I could turn that into cash, which was cash you spent on them. But now you're going to get this 1099 K form and you've got some explaining to do. That's ludicrous. Absolutely. The, oh, it, it's it's going to be. I, I can't. Um, you were talking about targeting. That is absolute. You know, back in I also taught in what was then Czechoslovakia, now it's the Czech Republic, and I would talk to the students, parents, and grandparents, and they said, you know, like you live in constant fear of somebody narking you out, somebody you know telling on you. Well, now with the internet, my digital presence, my online presence, because I'm super conservative, I'll be the first one they look for. I've got ten years of of funny memes and comments and stuff like that, I'm, I'm public enemy number one. You know, back then you, right. had to, you, had to, you, know, you had to rely on people kind of spying on each other. Now everybody has a digital footprint. And, 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 and the fact is that the things that you express, which are, you know, the absolute ultimate in, in freedom of speech, is now being targeted. It's not anymore a conspiracy theory or you being delusional about the government doing things. The government is doing things that the the paranoid people <laughs> that that you saw in uh, the movie Conspiracy Theory, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, right. it's like well, ju- just because you're paranoid doesn't mean you're wrong. Exactly, that's actually coming true today because the things that we find. Think about this when you when that IRS whistleblower was testifying uh, a couple of months ago, I was blown away when he said, "I just realized that sitting in a parking lot." as an FBI agent taking down parents' license plate numbers who were protesting the radical transgender movement and the racist critical race theory was going too far. The federal government, any government, has no business monitoring those people that are involved in legit freedom of speech expression from insane ideas. And that's where we've gone. And so it's no longer, thanks so much for your call, Stan, it's no longer paranoia. It's what's happening. Here it is from IRS.gov when it comes to the 1099-K form on personal items. If you sold a personal item, you may get a form 1099-K. If you receive payments for a personal item you sold through a payment app or online marketplace. A personal item is something you own for a personal use, blah, 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 car, refrigerator, furniture, stereo, jewelry, or silverware, etc. How you report these payments on your tax return 
depends on whether you sold the item at a loss or a gain. If you sold a mix of personal items at a loss and a gain, report them separately. Oh, my God. This is from IRS.gov. Oh, my God. This is insane. We'll talk more. 866-90-RED-EYE. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara talking about the uh, new IRS uh, rule on uh, concert tickets, sports tickets, or anything that you sell on uh, on any type of uh, uh, app. Uh, yeah. uh, out there and right. we'll get to more of it coming up. But I just, I told this to Eric, j- just as we went into uh, to the last commercial break, I looked at him, I said, I just really wish you would stop doing any type of research <laughs> into the minutia of the things that we're talking about on the air. Oh, Cause all you're doing dude. is ticking me off I know. when you just read it and, and coming up following the, the top of the hour, I want you to read mm-hmm. from the, the actual, the uh, actual law. Mm-hmm. The the IRS yeah it's from IRS dot gov right the, the the so the IRS law uh, on this which because I I gave the I I gave the uh, the scenario of me wanting to sell my and I don't know oh, I don't yeah. know exactly how many CDs I have but over a thousand right which if I you know did that on Etsy or eBay or whatever it would look like I had a store would it not yeah oh yeah because yeah. yeah. I'm selling thousands oh, yeah. of CDs exactly coming up we'll talk more. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One. Now, it's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America, 86690 Red Eye. He is Eric Carley and I'm Gary McNamara. Well, you know, sometimes we'll we'll start on a topic, and this this was something that we actually brought up the last portion of last night, and we just thought, oh, okay, let's let's just bring it up again at the beginning of the show because we didn't we didn't cover it in depth at all. And it was right. and, and the way that in fact the stories that I saw on it yesterday was basically on on concert and sports tickets and the IRS new rule that if you sell it's not the profit that you make but if you sell tickets on the secondary market the IRS wants their cut of it mm-hmm. and and so they will view it if you and we gave the example of if you have uh cuz i think this is a this is a reasonable scenario you have uh, uh four tickets that uh to some concert and you paid 180 dollars for it Right, and you sold them for two hundred each, mm-hmm. so you made an eighty dollar profit. You got to pay the tax on it now because that sales is over six hundred dollars in a year period, and uh, if you sold it on, you know, what, whatever, uh, what do they call it? App you sold it on, or mm-hmm. what do they call them? Not an app, but a, uh, I mean, they are apps, but uh, platform, platform, mm-hmm. yeah, whatever platform you sell it at mm-hmm. has to report it to the IRS. And as Eric pointed out. And then Eric started doing research uh, uh, on it and said, well, that's $44 million. And we, as we were looking at it, it's like, because you talk to so many people sell tickets that way. That's why. That's a commonplace thing that that you do. But it also applies to other platforms for a ton of other things. eBay, uh, Am, uh, Amazon, Facebook Marketplace, uh, Etsy, whatever you sell. And we started asking the question, well, how do they know? For example, if you... If and we we talked about uh, you know uh, uh, online garage sales yeah that are that are done and I gave my scenario of of I've got way over a thousand CDs mm-hmm. and they're all packed in boxes now because mm-hmm. it took me a couple of months I don't know, fifteen years ago right. where I sat there every single day and recorded those CDs onto my computer. And now I've got them, you know, stored in a couple of places, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so I always have all of my music. Well, the mm-hmm. CDs I don't use anymore. Right. I really don't need to keep them. Mm-hmm. And if I decided to sell them on eBay, I would look like a store. 
okay. because there would be hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of CDs all selling individually. And I was like, <laughs> and this is and this is before you read this is before you read yeah, to me. I, I did not see the IRS rule that you just read, and we'll yeah. get to that in a moment. I said, well, how do they know? I don't have receipts of paying for these things, and. If let's say I have a thousand and I sold each one of them for ten thousand, well then I'm reporting ten thousand dollars in sales, and I can't prove that there was ever any expense, you know, and and I can't tell you what I paid for them originally versus what I sold them for. I don't know whether they've had appreciation or depreciation. I can't. What do I do? Just read off the IRS rule. What I'd be required to do. Okay, in that, and in that then situation. I'm going to audit you. Okay. All right. I'm going to audit you based on something you just said. Okay. Red flag. All right. Okay. By the way, I don't know if anybody's done the math on the 80,000 IRS agents based on the average uh, uh, income or, or, or pay for an IRS agent. 5.7, almost $5.8 billion every so, year. So they want to recuperate. Well, if, uh, if recoup, uh, recoup, not if, recuperate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be recuperating too. Uh, if if the Wall Street Journal is accurate on this alone, forty four million of these ten ninety nine forms going out, you know, uh, I don't know. You can easily with just thirteen dollars on the average of more revenue per on the average. Then you can pay for that five point seven, and that's not all they're going to do. They're going to do other things, mm -hmm. but just to give you an example. So here it is from IRS.gov about the ten ninety nine k and all this that we've been talking about. If you sold a personal item, you may get a form ten ninety nine k if you received payments for a personal item you sold. Through a payment app or online marketplace. A personal item is something you own for personal use, such as a car, refrigerator, furniture, stereo, jewelry, uh, or silverware for Gary Backstreet Boys collection on DVD. Those things. Backstreet Boys box set. Is there such a thing? How you report these yes. payments. Well, yes, I've, there is. I have no idea. And it's awesome. <laughs> okay. How you report? How you report these payments on your tax return depends on whether you sold the item at a loss or a gain. I'm I'm laughing because sometimes when when I'm in physical pain, I laugh. Did you see the movie The Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, no, was, where he laughed sometimes when he's always oh, in pain? In, yeah. in, if you sold. A mix of personal items at a loss and a gain. Report them separately. Wow. I'm sorry, Ms. Wilson. You had a garage sale. So you had that garage sale and allowed people to pay you via this app. And do you have a list of inventory from the garage sale? Now, how many of these items were sold at a gain. How many were sold at a you didn't properly put them down as loss or gain? Hmm. Now, I'm because I'm here's I'm what I was looking for is listen from the IRS. Hey, don't fret this because it'll be simple to keep track of all this. As I read it, it gets more complicated. If you've got an eBay business, if you've got a Etsy business, you should be expected to pay taxes on that. Now, if you're only doing $601 a year, it's not much of a business. Who am I to judge? Actually, I think anybody could call that a, mm, you're not doing too well. 50 bucks a month on the average. So it says, uh, what was the, mm, hold on. Oh, if you get a 1099K form in error, right? Mm -hmm. You get one from Venmo. Right. But it's because you sent a neighbor money you owed them. No, they sent money uh, they owed you. You know, it's not for something 
not for goods or services. Babysitters making 600 or There's more. Babysitter apps. Yep. Now, again, if you're making money, right. you should be expected to pay. But that's that's $50 basically a month in babysitting or more. Ridiculous. If you get a 1099K form in error, you may get a form 1099K in error when the form reports payments that were gifts or reimbursements from family or friends and doesn't belong to you or as a duplicate. Now, if this happens, you know, in the in the first example, reports payments that were gifts or reimbursements. In other words, it doesn't belong. It's not revenue. Contact the issuer. This is what you have to do. Contact the issuer immediately and have them send you a corrected form 1099K. You have to jump through these hoops. This is beyond stupid. By the way, when there are legitimate concerns of, uh, and and I know this from owning different businesses and, and doing contract work and, and those kind of things, and, and sometimes I had to contact, uh, contact the payer and say, hey, this wasn't right, uh, this wasn't the right amount or whatever. It's like pulling teeth. Now imagine you've got to contact Venmo or whoever, and you've got to get that. Because now, think about this. You've got to go out of your way to prove that that was a mistake by that company and wasn't revenue. You know the money transfer program banks have now? Yeah. Uh, and and even if you send to somebody else's bank account, mm-hmm. you know, you can, you can family members, whatever, mm-hmm. then I've got to prove now if that's over $600 even there, what it was for? Well, you, you're not supposed to get a 1099K, no, because that's just personal reimbursement. What, what they're saying is, if you send it, if you Venmo or someone Venmos you money, they owe you. So it's not just on bank transfers. If it was a gift. But how do they know it's a gift? That's where you've got to prove it. Well, this this is the thing. Is that, that well, yeah, no, though that that'll be yeah, that'll be separate. And I, I'm guessing now they're gonna require to say this is uh is this for business purposes, yes or no, on the app or on the platform. You're gonna have to there's gonna have to be a way to distinguish that. Otherwise, they have to send a ten ninety nine form to everyone, and that isn't the case because the law doesn't state that. And so they won't yeah, so they will separate that. You and I were talking about this off the air earlier. So according to the law, they're going to have to separate that. Otherwise, every transaction, every every person, user, with transactions that receives 600 or more in transactions total for the year would get a 1099K. Because, because, and that's not what the law Because I'm states. allowed to gift 15000 mm-hmm. I think it is, yeah, right? and that wouldn't apply. To anybody. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, per year, yes. And so, but. That's what they're saying here. If you get it in error, well, let's say, you know, Venmo screws up. Cash app, Zelle, whatever. They screw up. And they they see that you sent or you received more than I think it's Zelle 600. My, yeah, I think it's Zelle my bank has. Mm-hmm. And so they send you a 1099K form mistakenly. Right. It's your burden to contact them and get a corrected 1099K. Because when I read that, it's it's a headliner in this whole page, you know, if you get a Form 1099K in error, I thought, oh, this must much, you would just write on, or you would just, on your tax form, say it was an error. No, you've got to contact the company that sent you that 1099K form, that's on you. This is what I was talking about when I talk about people who don't get 1099K forms. Uh, A member of my family um, makes a a few bucks every once in a while. 
house sitting and dog sitting for a friend while they're on vacation. And I don't know, it could get over $600 in a year. And the thing is, is that they they pay them for that. Well, now that that app is going to have a, I'm guessing, the only way to do that and distinguish that because Venmo and all these companies don't want to be burdened with the uh, with sending every, basically, most of their users with a 1099K form. That would be a massive, massive, massive. They would post it on their account, basically. Okay. They, they wouldn't, they don't and, mail it out. And but. just so you know, the 1099K form is specifically just for payment apps, online marketplaces, credit, debit, or mm-hmm. stored valued cars, such as gift cards. Mm-hmm. It's specific for that, so it's not to be mistaken with getting paid, uh, you know, uh, as a subcontractor in in another way. That would be Unless a ten ninety nine C. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they're going at just after that. Now coming up, you have a question because I'd give you given you my scenario I'm audit you. based on you know based on you know. The fact that I've got a thousand CDs, I'm throwing that, rounding that number off, a thousand CDs that I may want to sell that I've had, what? When did the first CD come out? Late 80s? Because I've had CDs since the late 80s. 1980s, to be clear, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I didn't, yeah, because it was the 1880s, it might be a certificate of deposit back then. (laughs) Maybe. At at Wells Fargo, which was... Uh, actually more of a stagecoach corporation. Rit- written back on then. saddle leather. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, barkeep. Uh, all right. Give me something to write with. Jesus is. It's just crazy. Well, I guess. I, but, I, I, but I'm going to take it. Okay. All right. We'll do a it. A little further. Okay. 866-90-RED-EYE. Hi, I'm Jen Loomis, a transport safety expert at J.J. Keller. And I'm here to share a tip on roadside inspections. Roadside inspections all begin with the driver interview, during which the officer will gather basic information from the driver and prepare the driver for the inspection. The officer will also be evaluating the driver, determining if the driver can speak English, is under the influence of anything, has an illness, or is fatigued. The officer will ask the driver for required documents, including vehicle and driver credentials, the driver's log, and shipment paperwork. The officer may also conduct a vehicle inspection, Before beginning the inspection, the officer will take steps to make sure the inspection can be done safely. These include chalking the wheels, wearing personal protective equipment, and explaining what will be required of the driver. The driver needs to pay close attention to these instructions so that the vehicle inspection can be conducted in a manner that is safe for the inspection official. This tip was brought to you by J.J. Keller & Associates. Visit us at jjkeller.com. We'll be right back with more Red Eye Radio with Eric Harley and Gary McNamara. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara talking about the new IRS uh, uh, law and uh, just how far reaching it will be. It's just not about concert tickets and sports tickets that you may resell on the secondary market uh, with total sales over $600, which means they want to get uh, any type of uh, revenue. This isn't going after billionaires. This is going after the average person out there. Right. Um, and so I, I gave the scenario of if I wanted to sell my 10,000 CDs mm-hmm. and now you're saying you're going to perform an audit on me. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, by the way, I want to update uh, the the last segment because there was, there's concern if you have to go back and jump through hoops to get a corrected 1099 K form, there was a, also an updated link to another page that said, you can list it if you weren't able to get that corrected 1099K. You can make a note, by the way, good luck with that. You can basically say that this 1099K was sent to me in error. Okay. It wasn't supposed to be sent. It wasn't a business transaction. It was a reimbursement from my roommate for rent and and that kind of thing. But again, you're just, look how complicated this thing mm-hmm. is. You mentioned what you did with the CDs. You transferred the content of those CDs, Mr. McNamara, onto your computer. Yes. You still own the content of those CDs somewhere? Because now you've duplicated the content, which means doubled the content, and you're going to sell 
the tangible content in one form while still retaining the content. So I still have for the, your value. I still have the value. I the value. I'm we see keeping. that as a profit. So anything. Oh my God. So any. So I. You re- just got all that music for a pretty good discounted price. Let's just say you sold them all <laughs> at the exact same price, and you were going to claim a profit, right? Yes. You know, you know that you bought each one for fifteen dollars and ninety nine cents. And then you're just going to sell them each, and the marketplace dictates that you can get $15.99. Oh, but wait a minute. Because I still retain the value of the recordings the online that I'm... And the so, intellectual and, property is something you still retain. The value yeah. of that was the music itself. It's so why you so, bought. so I owe taxes on everything that I sell. I'm just saying the, this is a so so forget about appreciation or depreciation, yeah. inflation or now anything else. Gotta, that None sounds of it like matters. a business to me, Mr. McNamara, where you're essentially getting the music for free. I'm double dipping. Yeah. <laughs> now I feel like Chris Hansen at that dateline. Oh, but now we've got a new scenario. <laughs> Gary McNamara and Eric Harley taking your calls. 1 866 90 Red Eye. And he's Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. By the way, the uh, scenario that Eric laid out, yeah, from we know is not current IRS law, but the no, fact no, no. But, but the fact is you make a you made a great point on interpretation uh, of interpretation that you could see on in profit. The, in, in, in the future of what constitutes profit. Loss and, again. And, 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 yeah. And, By the and, way, going into the break, I said uh, Chris Hansen from Dateline. I meant Keith Morrison. Keith Morrison, And yes. it's an important distinction because what Keith Morrison does at Dateline and what Chris Hansen did at Dateline are two very different things. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to bring that yeah. into the whole scenario and, but no and, and so very quickly it's about just, profit yeah, or gain yeah ju- just to just to reset so people know we're talking about the new irs rule that we started out about you know reselling concert tickets and sporting event tickets and how they're going to be taxed now and they're going to be taxed because they're going after any six hundred dollars in sales not profit but sales which is easy to get to if you've got concert tickets in an entire year the irs is now going to uh, monitor and it also includes the story expands. We ex- well, we expanded the story because it's not just that. It's anything you use on any of the app platforms that exist out there, Etsy, eBay, Amazon, whatever. And so we came up with the I came up with the the scenario of the over a thousand CDs I have to sell, and said I've got a thousand, mm-hmm. and so I want to 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 uh, to sell them. How are they going to figure out, you know, what the loss versus profit is? You know, on that, did you get a loss or a gain? Well, how do you do that? Appreciation. What's a depreciation? Appreciation. Does it matter? Who makes a decision on a uh, on a KTEL record? Okay, the mm-hmm. KTEL records from the 70s. Because mm-hmm. I also talk about selling my records <laughs> that I still have. But, you know, who who figures out, uh, okay, I'll use it again, uh, a Kajagoogoo CD from the, the late 1980s. You know, what's that worth? What is the appraisal done on something like that, how does inflation uh, affect it? But then Eric blew it all out of the water for me by saying, "Well, why can't they look at it that you recorded all that music, you put it into digital form? That's why I, I you can retain re- the content. Right, I retain the content, which means I retain the value. So everything. Why can't the IRS say everything that I made off those CDs is profit? Right, is income. Right." And it's it is about the the interpretation of profit or loss, yeah, gain or loss, yeah. and and it's important here. And I, you know, I was talking about too how the the platforms and the and the apps know uh, or or are gonna know whether or not you were, especially the the apps, the uh, Cash App, Zelle, or any of them, how they will know. Well, are you just sending your sister in, or is there, did your sis, sister-in-law send you money because she owes you money? Is it reimbursement? Is it, is it a gift? Or is it for a product or service? They're already doing that. There was uh, I, I did remember during the break that at least one of the apps that I use is already 
asking you what it's for. And so that will that's how they'll know. It'll be a certain category that you'll choose. Now, here's my question. If you're if now if they're sending you the money, the sender, John is sending you money, it'll ask John, is this for right. a service or product? And he'll say yes, if he does, I guess. And then that will flag it as something that needs to go toward your six hundred dollar total of determining or constituting that. 1099k form by that app by that app company that platform so they'll it it is going to get so complicated wow it is going to get insane you can do your taxes on a postcard exactly this has just become stupid again if you're a business and you're making money you should report the money you're making Nobody debates that. But why are you putting the burden on individuals to prove that they're just getting some money from some CDs they bought years ago? Okay, but here's here's a, a question now. I said this isn't part of the current rule. Well, I don't know. It hasn't been interpreted by a judge yet. It might be. Hmm. They might look, IRS might look at it and say, well, you know, did you keep, you know, do you have this music stored? Oh, yeah, I put it all on CD. So you actually have the music off of these CDs all on digital. Why did you put it? Why did you put it on your computer? Because there was a value to it. Well, I mean, that's and, I'm not going to argue and, that. And for practical purposes, right. for listening to the music, it became more practical for you. Right. So not only did you do that, you were improving. So there's total value in that process of Spending right. those countless hours transferring that you saw fit, Mr. McNamara, you saw the value in it because you spent all that time transferring it so that you could use it on the go with your other devices. And that that music, that content is now in the in the cloud. And so you retain the value of it. Maybe even you could argue, Mr. McNamara, a greater value. Uh, no, I was going to say that a greater value because, because now it can be accessed because, anywhere. Because now it's downloaded on, on, onto my phone that mm-hmm. I can take anywhere. So I have thousands of songs, which uh-huh. I didn't have the ability to do. So you've actually. Or if in- you put it on your Apple, if you put it on your Apple Music, you know, your old iTunes or Apple Music, and you've got that app on shared on different devices you've got it on any device right you don't have to take transport that mr mcnamara you my gosh we could argue that you made a su- substantial profit off right of that everything that i made off of all the cd sales is taxable and your your collection by the way while is sizable there are collections out there of music that are huge and i have a right. friend who has a four bedroom house he's single and three of those bedrooms are filled with crates of vinyl. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so, and, and, and the, and the fact is there, and, and cause I had said, well, that's not stated in the law. It doesn't have to be stated in the law no. because it, again, that would go be before a judge. Well, you know, the, you know, what is, is value is the judge figures out, right. you know, you know, what is the value of something and the value of something is, you know, what's the value of music? Listening to it. You have the ability to do it. Oh, yeah. In fact, it's easier and more organized now because uh, the majority of it's on my phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you fit all those thousand CDs on your phone? Yes. Right. So it's so on digital form, you still have the original value because the value was not in, you know, the the uh, the cover sheet of the, you know, the, the, the cover right. of it. Every right. the values there, right? So you owe everything, and so the IRS could come up with that new rule and simply get it approved. If you fought it, get it approved by a judge. No, that is value. What if, What if your father collected from the time he was nine years old vinyl, and he bought at with at every chance he bought something on vinyl, and then at some point his descendants inherit or one of his descendants inherits the entire collection but they don't want to keep it they're going to convert that to money then all of a sudden you get into the conversation oh wait a minute you converted that into money because if you just said yeah dad's records i got dad's records that doesn't really fall under the inheritance tax 
But if you decide to convert all of this and the IRS steps in and they go, oh, you, you made money doing that. Yeah, well, there's my dad's records and he inherited. Oh, inherited. Well, now we've got to talk about the inheritance tax. What we're spelling out here is all of the tentacles of the IRS that or, shouldn't exist. No, 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 no. Here, I'll, I'll have I have the inheritance argument. You know, we need to shut up because we're just giving the government ideas. We if should they just play some of, Christmas if, music if, if they haven't thought about it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but when you talk about okay, I wouldn't be under the inheritance tax because my father, you know, his his uh, estate was not worth that much. But since I took all of his records and actually recorded them, you know, or downloaded them to digital, I have retained, well, you know, what my father saved. That was the inheritance. Mm-hmm. Me selling those records is additional income outside of the inheritance. Right. We're going to put a value on every step of that. Yeah. Which is why we hate the It may sound very rabbit hole, but the but well, look, no, at, no, look, no. At, look at tax not, law. No, it's not a rabbit hole because of tell where we are tax right law. now. Yeah, tell it's me not tax, a rabbit hole. Tell me the tax law isn't a rabbit hole. We yeah. just went through the very simple page. It was just one one page of the IRS.gov website for 1099K. Well, here's what you do if you sold it at a mix of a gain and a loss. You need to separate those things, those personal items. Yeah. We're just extrapolating where they can huh. go on a law that isn't well defined. Huh. Yeah. And understanding that the IRS has gone places we never thought it was going to go. Right. And just like the Department of Justice has gone to places we never thought it was going to go. Right. Could you imagine three years ago saying, oh, yeah, the FBI is going to be sitting in parking lot taking license plates of parents because they're complaining that the school board wants to mandate that boys can use a girl's restroom. Right. And that the FBI would be sitting out taking out the, the parents' numbers who objected to that. Inevitably, what happens with every tax law change, behavior changes. Yeah. And when the behavior changes, the IRS will make a note of it. And the Treasury Secretary will make a note of it. Oh, well, now we need to scrutinize even further because people are running. They're hiding something. This isn't a slippery slope. And when you pass a law... When you pass a law, as they they did here, mm-hmm. which naturally people are not used to reporting any of this stuff or keeping right. records on right. it, then the IRS has to assume that there's going to be a huge discrepancy and or you may be hiding some of it. Right. Because if you get like that was my point earlier with someone who has never received a 1099, they typically don't get one. Right. Then they're going to get a 1099K. What? What's this for? Oh, okay. Well, you need all the receipts. And then let's just say, let's say, and I go, I know again, ignorance is no excuse. There are going to be countless people who turned around some concert tickets because they couldn't go or, you know, they sold a few DVDs. They wanted to make room in their closet and they sold some DVDs and, uh, or CDs and, Got the money back, but they don't have a receipt from when they first bought them. And then all of a sudden, you know, the app company is saying, well, no, no, no. They made $1,200. And the IRS is saying, well, you didn't even claim that. You didn't even acknowledge that. That's tax evasion. And you've, you take, did, and you've taken a loss. Exactly. You and you've even, actually taken a loss on those yeah. items. And you're thinking, well, wait a minute. It doesn't apply to me because it shouldn't. 86690 Red Eye. Coming up, more with Gary McNamara and Eric Harley. It's Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. He's Eric Harley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Let's go to Charles in Southfield, Michigan, about the new IRS rules. Charles, welcome. You're on Red Eye Radio. Hi. And good morning to you. Back in 1963, as a public safety officer, I bought a Walther PPK pistol for $100. 
Today I sell it for a thousand dollars, so here comes my ten ninety nine K. Yep. However, in sixty three I was making six thousand dollars a year. Now that position's paying like sixty thousand dollars a year. So maybe with inflation I broke even. Oh that would yeah, no, I, I would wonder because I if you talk about the valuation or depreciation uh, uh of an asset if you market for inflation again is it is it considered a profit it's interesting that you bring that up charles because uh gary and i were talking off the air earlier and it's like okay but what about you know time and consideration for dog walkers and everything else and we can talk about because the left loves to talk about fair wages and fair this and fair that and house sitting well that's a 24 hour job i mean you have to stay in the house uh, all these things where you could battle back, but it comes down to this. We shouldn't have to. And if you've got a business and you're making profits, then you got to pay taxes. But if you're selling items as an individual and it's a garage sale kind of thing, then no, no. If Again, if you've got a million dollar diamond that you found and you paid a dollar for it, we can have a conversation. You know, and when you when you look, for example, at the, the babysitting and uh, the, the way that California has said, well, the gig economy isn't fair because you need to be an employee because of lunches and all this stuff. Well, what about if you're house sitting? House I mean, sitting. I mean, does, does the, does the, and I know you people go, well, don't guys, you're, now you're going off the, the no. The, now you're going off the deep this end. This is the way IRS law is written. Well, I mean, it's it's we see what's happening in California. How they wish to destroy the gig economy because yep. of all these things. Saying, right. well, no, you should you should be taking a lunch. You should be doing this. You yep. should, well, if that's the yep. case, if you're house sitting and you're getting paid for it, why don't the same rules apply? Right. According to liberalism. Now, these aren't our rules that we're creating. These no. are the rules they've created and right. the direction that they're going. Exactly. So you have to wonder, will they go that far? This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.